today I thought I'd talk about the photometric mosaic script and how that works. And so let me just bring up my screen here. For those of you that have never heard of this script or the tools that are associated with it, it was created by John Murphy. Uh, it's part of PixInsight. It ships with PixInsight. Uh, he uses photometry uh, to measure the scale factor of the individual tiles, and he creates surface plines to model the gradient. And uh, it, it results in a um, very clean, very smooth, seamless looking mosaic. And we're going to take a look at one tonight here. Um, it can be used for very small uh, mosaics like we're going to do tonight. We're only going to do two panels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or, or you can do very large mosaics with it as well and large grids. And I've done, I've done one as, as large as six panels. Uh, but I've seen people do, uh, you know, larger, larger mosaics than that. So uh, it certainly can be used for that. Now, the way that it works is you start with linear images. I typically crop off any rough edges. And uh, it, it says in the directions that you can uh, use DBE or you can, you can leave it out and, and uh, extract your background uh, gradients later. I always use DBE on the individual tiles. Uh, but it says if you have lots of sky background in your images, uh, you can choose to do that after you merge them together. Um, you then use image solver on each individual tile uh, to uh, plate solve the individual images. And then you use a script called mosaic by coordinates, which we're going to see, uh, to register those images. And it registers them based on that plate solved solution that we get out of image solver. Um, so there's no, you know, trying to align with stars or, or, or doing anything with the images themselves, except using the plate solved coordinates of the image. Um, we then use trim mosaic tile to crop off any uh, low signal uh, fringes that are, you know, around the edges. And then we use the photometric mosaic script to join them together. Um, as I said, you can use it for large ones. If you are going to do a large mosaic, uh, the way that you do it, is to crop, but to uh, join either columns or rows first, and then individual scripts. So if it was a nine by nine, maybe you do three rows first, and then you put the individual rows together. So that's how that would work. So let's take a look at it. Um, I'm just gonna uh, pull up. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me do this first, and just to show you what I thought would work with tonight. Uh, as is uh, two images that I did not shoot to be part of a mosaic. Uh, we have the, the Hamburger Galaxy NGC 3628. And um, I have another image, if I can go back here. I have another image that I shot of um, M65 and 66. And I did not plan on them, them being a mosaic. And so uh, I thought we'd stitch those together and, and, and come up with a... Uh, well, with a mosaic image. So here's the individual frames. I have L, R, G, and B of the first image. And we'll put those away. And the same thing for the second image. Okay. And I kind of did a bit of the Julia Childs method here. So so most of this is pre-cooked, so it's, it's going to go pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but as I said in my introduction, the first thing that we do is solve the individual scripts or the individual tiles, excuse me. And the way that we do that is with the image solver script. And we would simply add the files in here. I have it on list of files, as you see right there. And we're just gonna add in the individual files and I'm just gonna navigate to where I have those stored. And I'll just select them all. You give it the coordinates of where, you know, of, of uh, you know, one of the one of the images or near the center. And so if, if I just put, you know, Leo triplet in here as an example. And we'll just grab the Leo triplet and I'll put the coordinates in here. I always use topo, the topocentric model. So for that, I give it the longitude and latitude of where my telescope is. The focal distance and pixel size are also uh, important. Well, it didn't have height. Uh, I think that's 1450 where we are. And um, if you're using a topocentric model, under model parameters, you want to make sure that you have ICRS selected. If you're not using topocentric, then you would select GCRS. But the 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 right, I, in my opinion, the right way to do this is with topocentric and ICRS. And here's the pro tip: this distortion correction is very important. 
make sure that you have distortion correction checked this checkbox right here turned on i never had to uh, change any of the individual settings under distortion correction so i always leave those as at defaults uh, but you know if, if need be you could you could select them the the first time that i ran this script i did it without distortion correction my stars weren't lining up on the edges so definitely definitely want to turn that on we would just hit um okay at this point and it would go off and solve all the individual files now i've already done that we're not going to have to wait for it um but what results are these files with the with the wcs uh coordinates added now they look exactly the same the only difference is there's a plate solve solution included as part of the um of the metadata for each of these images okay so the next thing that we do under mosaic is we we click on the mosaic by coordinate script now well, i still got things to know. okay now the the um the way that this works as i said before is it takes those plate solve solutions and it mashes the mashes all the Im images together to give us what the outside frame of our mosaic will look like and then places the individual frames in there read by registration so the right way to do this is to put all of your frames all from all channels in this script at one time so we'll turn those eight images on that we have for you know the uh, for frame one and frame two we want the the wcs images the solve the plate solved images to be added in there i always use gnomic pro projection and say okay go Again, I've already done this, but while as this runs, uh, what it's going to do is register those images uh, and create things that look like this. So here is, and let me just get rid of this so that we can see this a little bit more easily there. Uh, here is the output of mosaic by coordinates, and it has uh, expanded the frame size to be the size of the entire mosaic and laid each individual tile uh, the right spot so you can see how those how those two are going to line up okay so you do that with with all of your all of your tiles at once and it will lay out the entire uh, mosaic for you okay so that the next thing that we want to do as i said is trim off any fringe areas um let me zoom this in a little bit and uh we'll see if we can't show this to you if there's any low signal areas on these fringes where the where the two are going to join together and we don't take care of that, we'll see a seam. And we don't want to have any seams. So we're going to use this script called Trim Mosaic Tile. Now, in my opinion, this is the one with the most funky user interface. Uh, and I'm going to attempt to show you how that works here. Um, but the, the UI here is, is a, a little bit tricky the first time you use it. So I'm going to select the first frame that we're going to work with, which is that L1 registered image that we have right here. And obviously, we want to be real careful about the bottom edge of this image and the right side of this image, because that's what's going to get overlaid onto the onto the others. Right. So we want to make sure that we're that we're eliminating any low signal area on the bottom and the and the right. I always take a little bit off the other edges as well. So if I were if I were setting this up, I would say, well, let's just take three pixels off top and left, and we'll start looking at 10 pixels off of the bottom and the right. Now we can preview what that looks like by clicking this real-time preview checkbox right here. And right now I have it set for image outline, so it's gonna show me the entire image. And if I scroll, the X and Y values to be the bottom and right side of the image like that, we can see where that bottom right edge is. And we see the white line, that's the outer part of the, of the image. And if I click on preview trimmed image over here, you, you can see how that's moved back. And so if there is any low signal area out there, which maybe we can see just a couple of pixels worth of of uh, fringe that's all going to be trimmed off nice and neat to give us a seamless mosaic okay so we do that and we click run and it'll trim it for us and then i'll move on to l2 
Now, again, the opposite is true on panel two. Here, we're concerned about the top and the left side. So this would be different. I would maybe set top to 10 and left to 10 and bottom and right to two or three. And we can do the same thing, preview that. And there's the, there's the edge that we're, that we're concerned about. And there's the preview after the crop. So we can see how that's, you know, coming in. And if, if it's not far enough, you just increase the, the values. You just make it 15 or 20 or whatever it happens to be, right? Or whatever it has to be rather to, uh, to get rid of that, that fringe area. And we'll run that one. And that's it. So we would do that for all of our images. I'm only going to do these two. We're just going to join two of them together. But we would do that for each individual channel, cropping off any low signal area, <clears throat> excuse me, off of all of those images. So the next and final step to joining these together is to use the photometric mosaic script itself. Uh, it obviously remembered what I was doing from before, um, but we would just put in the first panel and the second panel in here. And we can take a look at the stars that it's detecting. If you drop down this, this uh, uh, star detection section, there's a button here where it has detected stars. And we can click on that and it'll pull up a little preview and show us with these red circles that you see here, all the stars that it's detecting uh, and that it's going to use to join the, the mosaic up. And the, in the photometry section, we can also look at a photometry graph of those individual stars. And it will show us the um, target star flux versus the reference star flux. And, you know, see a pretty graph there. So all kind of nifty little stuff to, to look at. But the real work gets done down below here. The mosaic join section is where you really begin. <coughs> you can choose to overlay the two sections, lay one on top of each other. That's really only appropriate if you're in a really dark sky and you have no gradients, um, which I am in a really dark sky site and, and I typically don't have gradients, but I don't use that anyway. I think I get a better um, combination if I try to blend them or I try to average them. And typically I see that average usually has the best results, but either of those two is fine. Um, you can set the, the outlier percentage and you can move that up or down if you, if you choose to. You can look at the section that it's going to use to join, which is what that is right there. Um, you can adjust the scale. If you, if you happen to be doing a, um, uh, a, a one-shot color image, you could adjust the scale of the individual channels if you wanted to. I don't have any reason to do that. I'm shooting in mono. Um, but really, uh, not much to do there except click run. It'll go out there and do the work, uh, putting these two together. And in a second, we should see our image. There it is. Okay. Now the red that you see there is the mask. It's just got a mask turned on. I'm just going to click exit and we'll get rid of the mask. We don't need to, to look at that. And you can see, hopefully you can see, I'm just going to zoom up a little bit. Uh, that we've got a pretty nice, pretty clean uh, join there between the two between the two images. In fact, uh, let me let me just do a little better job with the with the stretch, and maybe we can see that a little better. Oops, come back here. Let's zoom that up a little bit, and maybe we can. There we go. We can see a little bit better what that's actually going to look like, not, not such a harsh stretch. And you can see that it looks pretty clean. And, and you also notice that because I didn't shoot these as part of a, uh, I didn't plan this as part of a mosaic, you can see the, the areas uh, that, that were not included. And sometimes these things are more difficult to join when you're trying to use star alignment and things of that nature. So this, this does a real good job of putting those together, even though they weren't, it wasn't considered to be a mosaic in the first place. I would then typically crop and there's a set of crop parameters that I can take off of this guy. And there we have it. I would repeat the same thing and let's just get rid of this. Uh, we can get rid of that mass now. 
we can move these aside, uh, move this aside. And we would do that again. We would do that for each of the individual channels, red, green, blue. And we would end up with things that look like this. I'm going to just put him away for a second. We would end up with L, R, G, and B. And then you do what you always do. You combine the RGB to get something that looks like that, and you start playing with it. And in the end, it turned into an image that looked like this. And if we go ahead and zoom this up at the place where they're joined together, uh, I think you can see that this is pretty smooth, pretty clean mosaic. Um, the the you know without a lot of gradients, without any seams, and it's in my opinion pretty painless to put that together. Yeah, so there you go. That's the whole process. Do we have any questions there? Yeah, there's a question from John. How are different noise backgrounds or grainless variations handled when combining Hi, John. the images? Um, so what he does is he, he calculates a surface spline. And I actually um, have images that I shot in my backyard that aren't as good as this one, uh, where, there was, where there was some noise uh, in one of the panes uh, and a low signal area in the others. And they, they, they weren't really... Um, it wasn't really the best uh, images to join together. And it did a really nice job of smoothly transitioning between each of those panes uh, so that it, it looked as seamless as it possibly could. So he, he, as I say, he uses surface splines to try and model the gradient and apply that to the joint mosaic. So if you have, I mean, a two panel, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's pretty straightforward. So how long, if you have a four or maybe something bigger, how long does it take to put those together? It's really exactly the same. It's just that you're going to do it more time. So you saw me do two panels, right? If I were doing four, I would create one row like this, and then I would join two more together to get a second row. And then I would put those two rows together. So you're for a two by two matrix, you're in effect going to run it three times, one for one, once for row two, and then once to put the two rows together. So the time involved, aside from the time involved in solving the images, which, you know, if, depending on your machine, I don't know how long it takes you to run the image solver. Um, but that's really the only difference is the computation time to run the images. The joining of the images, putting them together, uh, really just runs lickety split. It, it's pretty quick. And I saw that you did your R, G, and B separately. Yes. Uh, what about doing them from an RGB image? I, I'm sure you can. And that's the purpose of having the, um, the separate scale factors down here. So I know that you can uh, join them together that way if it is a, either an OSC image or one that you've already put together. Um, you know, so that functionality does exist. I know that it's there. I've never used it. And what program did you use to capture the mosaics? Uh, did I, what program did I use to, to take the images? Yeah, I think that's a question. All right. You yeah. might also want to know how you um, uh, scoped out your overlaps. How I scoped. So uh, as I said, in this one, I didn't plan on this one being an overlap. Um, but I can show you what I would do if if I were uh, creating a, a mosaic that that had overlaps. There's two different ways to do it. Probably the easiest thing to show you is Telescopius. Um, I I use Voyager personally, uh, and Voyager has a has a function has functionality to do that. But if you use something like Telescopius here, let me let me just pull this up real quick. Um, let's go to the same place. Let's go to um, M65 as an example. And let's say that I wanted to, uh, to, to create a mosaic out of these two, then I can just come here and say, I want this to be, uh, uh, I'm not sure which one, no, it goes the other way. I want it to be one by two. And I can, I can say how much overlap that I want to have here. So it's 10% or, or I would actually do around 20. Um, but something like that, and it will lay the individual tiles out for you, and it will give you the individual uh, RA and deck of each individual pane if you want to do it that way. But as I say, on, on this particular image that I showed you, I did not plan it to be a mosaic. 
I had two separate images and I said, what the heck, let's put them together. Uh, the, I, I did not plan a mosaic on that one. Uh, there's another question from Chandra Saker uh, Nori. Is there a way to use the RA and DEC data already stored in the, the FITS file instead of doing the plate solve? I don't believe so. And again, it's more than just RA and DEC because you want to make sure that you allow it to do, uh, let me pull it back up here, that you allow it to do that distortion correction. So it, we're, we're, we're concerned with more than just the RA and DEC center. Um, it, it creates a, a much larger solution than that. I'd be lying to you if I said I understood everything that it does, because I don't. Um, but I, I know that it does look at uh, the, the edges of the image and will correct coordinates for, the, for any distortion that's introduced by your system and will account for that. So it's more well, than just having the center. So I mean, there's another well comment here about using gradient merge mosaic, which I've used in the past mm -hmm. before this was out. How do you think that compares? Um, well, first of all, I think it's a longer process. Um, but the the uh, the the way that gradient merge mosaic works, and I don't even remember where it is. Whoops, I don't even remember where it is here. I'll I'll do it this way. Um, <laughs> I think it's a, oh, it is that you it is, is that you first have to align you have to use the star alignment process which is looking at the image to try and align stars right and right, you, you right you produce a a crude mosaic and correct. then map and the then, individual and then frames match on it exactly yes. you use star alignment to match those those on top of it and um you know personally <coughs> in my opinion the the, uh, the the process of using a solved solution and laying them on top of each other is always going to be more accurate than trying to match up your images. And uh, you saw how easy it was. I was I was done here in what just a couple of minutes. I mean, it's it's effortless. So I, I think it's a shorter process. I think it's a faster process and I think it's a better one. Uh, any more questions? I don't see anything, Molly. Nope, I think you got them all. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Kevin.